Hello lovelies, uh, today we're taking a look at The Bastard Princess, which is an adventure by Neat Games, who you may know via Neckbeardia. Um, now I got it for free, and I got to skim an earlier version on PDF. Uh, unfortunately, it being by Neckbeardia means I read the whole thing in a very thick Northern Irish accent. Uh, which made it harder for me to read. Nice to meet you. William Ulsterman. <laughs> I shall judge whether it is nice to meet you, Mrs. Bunfield, by your actions, not your upty words. Oh! Um, so, this is an adventure, and adventures are extremely hard to review, and to be honest, I don't really have much use for adventure books. Um... That's just the way things are. So I may be unduly negative. Uh, if you particularly like adventures and find them useful, then feel free to tick my score up by like half a point at the end. Uh, if it's something you find very useful, maybe you've got very limited prep time, things like that. Anyway, a couple of things before we really kick off. Um, yeah, it's AI art. And if that's a non-starter for you, then yeah, I'm I'm sorry <laughs> about that, but uh, it it is what it is, as the saying goes. Um, it's hard to really factor that in to any sort of judgment on a product. Um, however, let's briefly tangent my recent experience trying to hire artists. Uh, every time in the past I have done open calls on social media and often via my blog as well. And if there has been any interest whatsoever, I have gone through that interest to try and figure out um, you know, who's gonna be the best fit, who's gonna be the most cost effective, and then I hire someone on that score. Last time I did an open call, uh, I guess a couple of weeks ago now, maybe a week. Um, things did not go well. <laughs> I was spammed by about 50 people, the vast majority of which were scammers um, or people misrepresenting other people's artwork as their own, trying to extract an advance, even the most minimal advance, before they would do anything. And it's made it very hard for me to trust uh, anyone <laughs> anymore other than people I know through people I know you know how that is and I always used to do open calls because I didn't want to stick to people I knew and people who knew people I knew right I wanted to provide opportunities for you know, new young up-and-coming artists and and so on this just isn't viable anymore um, and as well as that you have issues with people vastly overestimating the worth of their work and their own level of competency. And it's, it's a lot of issues for someone trying to commission art um, and going to potentially a lot of expense to do so. This is a lavishly illustrated thing for a relatively short pamphlet of what? 50 pages or so, uh, A5 roughly. Um, it's just that the budget simply isn't there unless you go to AI to lavishly produce art on this scale, especially for something like an adventure. Still, for some of you, AI art means something is a complete non-starter, and that's fair enough in so much as it's fair enough. Um, the AI art here is producing something of a particular uh, look. It's consistent throughout. Um, I think AI art itself overall it tends to produce something that is now a recognisable sort of style or or appearance. Um, something like a, a slightly smoother version of the work of Ian Miller, who you might know for doing the backgrounds in Ralph Bakshi's film Wizards, amongst others. I think he did some art for Games Workshop as well back in the day. Um, I know he's illustrated Tolkien. 
it's I, I think AI AI art is perfectly perfectly fine for throwaway content like YouTube thumbnails and things like that. M morally better than just stealing some artwork to use for a thumbnail. I still have qualms about using it in commercial work, but we're all feeling the pinch right now, and it's hard to argue with either the price or the efficiency or the timeliness uh, when it comes to AI, AI art. Margins are tight. Adventures make the least money out of anything. Um, I don't know how any of that might colour your thinking, but I think it's worth taking on board. Now, as an adventure, I can't review this too terribly well because that would mean spoilers. Um, and that's that's a problem with reviewing any sort of adventure. But what we have here is basically a fairly linear, fairly small adventure, maybe one to three sessions, depending how long your sessions are, what the player's efficiency level is like, how, how well they get on with things and how distracted they get. It's designed with their game Dyson Demons in mind. There's a quick start for free on their website. But it is broadly compatible with most OSR games with you know, a little bit of um, rejigging here and there. Uh, basically, the town of Atiden has gone silent. You've been sent to investigate and to put paid to whatever has caused that particular silence. The town itself has been reduced to a near ruin, but clues there may lead you on to other locations where gradually you uncover a plot which is the fruition of years of conspiracy. Again, I can't really say too much specifically without giving things away. Um, at the end of the booklet is a bestiary or creature codex, and while the NPCs might not be terribly useful outside the context of this adventure, there are other creatures which you might be able to reuse to greater effect, which gives the booklet at least some longer-term usefulness. Ultimately, this is a somewhat edgy adventure that probably could have done with going a bit more full-on. It's suitable for most OSR games, particularly Dyson Demons, obviously. Uh, the setting itself is a little bit too sort of high gothic medieval to use with lamentations as written and within its default historical setting but it would work well with something like the black sword hack or with a little bit more work something like morkborg um, in terms of style it's well laid out with simple clear presentation the artwork while ai produced uses single red highlight and accent colors to great effect an effort has also gone into making the AI art output consistent. Um, there is a singular style that carries through the whole thing. Um, AI still seems to have big problems depicting weapons like swords and people holding them, um, but those artifacts are at least somewhat minimised in the chosen art here. I'd give the style of the booklet purely at face value a, a 4 out of 5 for those of us who have no particular dog in the air, in the AI fight. Um, I'm finding AI hard to say for some reason. Uh, substance wise, it's an adventure and my opinions on that are, are well known. It's a fairly linear one and a fairly short one. It does have some suggestions on where to continue the game if you're going for something that's more of a campaign and it does have that useful or somewhat useful bestiary and some random tables you might be able to half inch to use somewhere else uh, but as an adventure it obviously suffers from being a one use item uh, but at this form factor and page count and so on it shouldn't be too expensive um, so uh, hmm Ah, tricky. Um, I think that's a 3 out of 5 for me in, in terms of substance. So that's 7 out of 10 overall, 3.5 out of 5, slightly above average. 3 if you have a hate boner for AI art. Um, and you could add half again if you particularly don't have an issue with adventures and find them very useful. So that could raise it to a 4 uh, out of 5, an, an 8 out of 10 
if that was what you were thinking. So depending on you, it might be more more useful to you. Uh, but it's slightly above average. Three is the is the middle for my scores. Um, worth a punt if you're into quasi historical magic and somewhat edgy adventures. So I'm going to try and give a little bit of subjective advice moving forward from now on my reviews. People sometimes think I'm too critical. Uh, I don't know that I consider myself successful enough, despite my years in the industry, to give killer advice, certainly not on the commercial front, but maybe on the artistic front. Uh, what would improve this product? More long-term useful content would help a great deal. That, that helps any adventure. As I've been complaining recently, a lot of books are sold as content, but then are like half adventures, which is bad. But an adventure book with useful content in the back or on top or spun off from the features of the adventure, that's very useful. That's, that's gold. I think even if we're forced to rely on AI art for whatever reason, deadlines, money, whatever it might be, we should at least give the covers to human artists. And the cover is probably the most expensive and most important piece of work that we have in each book. Uh, even if we just do this to, to placate that howling mob of Luddites, uh, you know, it, it, it's worth it, all right, I, I think. And finding decent artists for that, you, you'd spend a bit more time, a bit more effort. I do think you get a better product at the end of it and something that's going to catch people's eye. But uh, don't be paying anyone $500 for their Sonic the Hedgehog original character, don't steal, you know, that they've drawn an MS paint. All right? There are people out there trying to get work on, on that basis, and let, let's just not do that, okay? Lastly, I think what could have made this adventure stand out a bit more would be if it had doubled and tripled down on its edgy and disturbing themes and elements. You know, something like Morkborg suffers from being all mouth and no trousers. This isn't quite that. Uh, it's all mouth, and it's at least wearing metaphorical booty shorts. But I felt like it should have been wearing metaphorical A-line flares with pockets in the knees. Just uh, do, do this again, but more. <laughs> it's my advice. Zach. For hundreds of years, my community has enjoyed cheddar cheese and pineapple on it. Thank you. And today, ye have been seen to trample our demands contemptuously unto the mud. Tal, friend, and welcome to Gore. Savage and beautiful, John Norman's Gorean saga is brought to life in the Tales of Gore role-playing game and its companion world book, World of Gore. Take flight on a tarn. Luxuriate in the bathhouses of Ar. Pit your steel against the deadly Kuri. Best your enemies and place them in your collar. Tales of Gore uses the D6 system, perfect for both new and old players. You can purchase it from Amazon, RPG Now, or Lulu.com. Tar Sada Gore.